Now, Ted Williams said many, many years ago, the single most difficult thing in all the world in sport to do is hit a round ball with a round bat square. Okay? Very, very difficult to do. So you're asking your kids to do the most difficult skill on the face of your face. You're asking your kids. You've got to understand how am I going to apply what we're going to look at here. How many people saw Jim's film yesterday on the computer? That's all? All of you saw that thing yesterday? That was great. Okay? I've got the same program on my computer. Jim talked about the importance of using videotapes. I videotape our kids using the first or second time we're doing something. Especially in hip. Because I wanted to see how they're swinging the bat as compared to what the best in the game is swinging the bat. Okay? Because these guys have got to be fine, especially this guy right here. Okay? So what I'm going to do, we're going to go through some photos, and then we're going to say, okay, how do I apply drills like Jim did? Jim did a great job of drills. We're going to apply some more drills to these mechanics. Okay, now, Jim talked a lot about keeping the bat above the ball. Basically, what that means is I want to be short to the ball, quick to it. He also talked about staying inside the ball. That means I let the ball travel farther. He also talked about staying behind the ball or keeping the big part of the bat in front of the ball. And he also said, what was the last thing he talked about? When I'm hitting the ball, I want to go off the ball or through the ball? Through the ball. That means I give myself more room for error. Watch the kids hit it. Don't hit it. They're in and out of the zone. In and out of the zone. You didn't see any of them. Boom! Stay through the ball. Boom! Stay through the ball. Now my bat's click, 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 click. I'm here and I'm still in front of the ball. I might miss hit it, but I'm going to hit it. If I hit on the wood, fat part, the metal fat part, I'm going to put some juice behind it. Okay? So I'm going to go a little slow out of the stand. I want to hit as you're talking about parallel teeth. I like to ride over the shoulders. Feet turned in a little bit. So I go over my feet turned in a little bit because this is what I want to stay close to allow me to torque into it, just like, like pitching. I don't want that thing flying open. It helps me keep my front side in there. So I can take my load and power it through the ball. My back foot is going to turn up on the toe. I'm going to rotate into the ball. The other thing is, you look at his head. His head is vertical. Straight up and down. Okay? Straight up and down. That means his eyes are parallel to the ground. Okay? Good looking gal walks in the door. You guys going to do this? Well, your wife's going to do this. Where are you going to do this? Pardon me, this. They're going to look like this. Okay? You're going to give the taxi cab to the guy that's driving like this? Not me. <laughs> Just, you know, if I come over here, I give you the taxi cab. Okay? okay? So, you want your guys to be able to see the ball. You watch big wooden hitters. They want to see that ball. That sucker's still a 95 mile an hour. Ryan can get that out of me. He can kill me. I want to see where it's going. Okay? Another thing is, do you know... Which eye is your hitter's dominant eye? They have to be a drill. Alright, you'll see that little small sign there. Take your hand, put it out in front of you, make a circle. Everybody do this. You can do this with your kids. Put it right in front of you like this. Look through that circle at that small sign with both eyes open. Now, hold the left eye and hold the right eye and see which eye you're seeing that with. That's your dominant eye. Okay? All right, now, slide that to hit. You got a, you got a little league kid up there. His dominant eye is his right eye and his right-handed hitter. And he hits like this. You're killing him. Because he's looking through the bridge of his nose trying to see the ball. Okay? I got to get that head straight right here. If he's a lefty and his left eye is his dominant eye, and he's like this, get him here where I can see Okay? The other thing is, we talk about rotating up on the toe. Uh, the starting left fielder for the Washington Nationals is one of my kids. I played for me for three years with a two time All American. His name is Josh Willingham. You may remember this past year, he hit two grand slams in one game. 13th guy, I'm kind of proud of that. 
13th Diabetes in history to do that. We had a clinic last week, last week and he and I talked about it. He did most of the talk and I kind of introduced him. And he was talking about every big thing here who slow down. When they get to contact, they're all on that back toe. Okay? This front shoulder stays down. What does it do for my head? It keeps me here. If you got kids that are spinning, squishing the butt, or sliding, what's the first thing that happens? That shoulder goes up. Jim talked about the front elbow, how important that is. We're going to talk about that. What does it do to your vision when you do that? Okay, now, I've seen the ball. I've identified it. I've decided I'm going to swing it, and I'm going to screw up my vision. How smart is that? Not very smart. Okay? So, it's very important that when I swing, that my swing mechanics allow me to keep my head on the ball the way my eyes can see the best. Okay? That's very important. Okay. Man, he's saying, he's been, he's on the balls of his feet, relaxed, good approach right there. How do you tell how far to get off home plate? Okay, Jim had a good example. Here's another way to do it. Here's what I tell our guy. Here's home plate. Take your stride stance. There's on the strike. Short, quick to the, to the pitcher. If I'm in a no stride stance, I'm right there. I'd be able to bend my knees, take my hand in my bottom hand, back, and barely touch the outside corner. So if I'm here, I'm too close. I'm back here, too far away. So it's real simple. I just go across my front knee, bend it. I'll start to the front of the box. Right there. And okay, now I can get to that ball. I can rotate to get to that ball. Okay? Notice the shoulder angle. Very, very important. Shoulders are down. Okay? Put a bat across my chest. I'm going to swing here, straight to the ball. I don't want to be looping and dropping the bat. Again, I do not want to get below my hands in the bat. Even more than that. Bats in a launching position. You can hold the bat any way you want to, but when you get to contact, the back of the hand is going to be to the ground with the top hand, the bottom hand is going to be top of the hand from the sky. Knocking numbers are going to be lined up. I don't care how you start, if you're going to be a good hitter, that's where you're going to end up right there. So why not have your kids start like that? Knocking numbers right there. Okay? The bat is in a great position. Jim talked yesterday about tipping the back. We call this noise, okay? And all it's going to do is distort their swing. They're not good enough to be Gary Sheffield and hit, okay? My college guys are not good enough to do that, okay? You want to get this back as quiet as you can and have just a little rhythm. So when you low, I'm in a launch position right there. Now, you can take it in your turn. And any picture that comes to the strike zone, Karate chop, you can take it back on the hammer. So it's karate chop, hammer. Now, if I'm in anything else, I'm going to have a long swing. I'm going to be below the ball, I'm going to probably cast, and I'm going to be hitting everything from underneath the baseball pop-ups. Tough to hit like that, this is a, okay? So this is, a, this is a great picture for a stance right there, okay?
where uh, they had Alex Rodriguez hit. The camera was from behind the pitcher in center field. And you could see the pitcher rolling up. What was Rodriguez doing? He was low. He was getting ready to hit. Okay? The other thing about him, when you've got to go up, when you go up there to the plate, you anticipate swinging the bat. I don't go up there with a question mark. Hey, you know, I don't know if I, I don't know if I'm going to hit that. You know, now, I'm going up there looking for a pitch. And I'm ready to hit. And it's hit, 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 no, it's not there. Okay? That's what I do. Okay? It's not maybe yet. I don't want to do it. Okay? So I've got to have what we call positive expectancy for that pitch to be my pitch. If I'm looking for a four, four seam fastball, or I'm looking for something middle of the play in or middle of the play away, I'm thinking that's what I'm going to get. And I'm looking to recognize it. If it's not there, boom. Okay? You go out here to drive. You're going around doing all this stuff. What do you call it? You circle things up. Roundabout, okay? I'm pulling up. I've got my blanket on. Do you know whether it's the inside lane or outside lane you're going to pull into? Sure you do. Otherwise, you get wrecks all the time. Okay? What's the same thing again? Do I recognize what lane that pitches in when it comes out of his hand? I should. Okay? So I'm ready for it. Okay? So, this is my loading position right here. Okay? Is he on his ball of the foot or is he up on his toe? Bingo. Every one of those videos that you saw, I got the same program in my computer that Jim showed you yesterday. You got your old school guys can argue all you want about this. I used to teach that. It doesn't happen. It's right there. Okay? Right there. And I've got it on my video too. All right? No, it's where is the barrel? It's behind the what? Hands. Okay? He's going to get as much rotation as he can before that barrel comes to the ball. What he's doing is he's creating time advantage for himself. The earlier I start swinging, the farther that ball is away from me, the greater chance for error. The longer I can let that ball travel before I bang, the better opportunity I've got to hit. Especially when you start facing upper level pitchers and the ball's moving, or it's biting on breaking stuff, or it's changing speeds on you. I gotta be able to stay loaded, and see it, and then make adjustments here, okay? So that has to be a real key right here. Notice the front foot's still closed. Okay, he's rotating to the other thing is, the chin is tracking the ball, head on the ball, right there. His back shoulder is rotating to him, all right? And he's going to come into the ball. Here's another thing about him. If you watch those videos closely, when those guys get to the ball, they don't just make contact and pull off of it. They hit it, and they punch and drive through the ball. It's an inside pitch right there, and they drive through it. They keep the barrel in front of it, and they trap through it. So I don't want to slap away from the ball. I want to punch through it. I tell kids, when you get done hitting, you've got to have your chin on your back shoulder, and you can actually see your heel to the sky. So if I take a good swing, right there, I can actually look back and see my heel right there on the balance position, because the ball, it's always going to be over one play. A lot of kids hit the ball like it's up in front of them. They hit like this. Instead of here, and drive through the ball. Okay? Any questions? Here to here, 
I'm stronger here than I am out there. Okay? I want to lift that barrel straight back in here. I got a lot more power. That's what Jim was talking about. We need to stay inside the ball. Stay behind the base. Right there. Right there. Now, the only thing I'm going to do, outside pitch, down the middle, inside pitch is the degree of which I'm going to rotate to get to the ball. Okay? Try to work on 
keeping the bat inside the ball. Here's another thing we can do. Outside pitch. We'll put this ball, this team back here. And if you don't have a bunch of teams, you need to have, make sure you have a bunch of teams now. We'll put this one over here. And I'll make it real tall. Right there. Now, I'm going to hit that outside pitch without casting. I don't want to get out here. I want to stay in here. Okay? I got that T there. Now I can load. Right there. Didn't hit that T. Had to keep my back short. Right there. Right down through every time. Notice my head is staying front shoulder, back shoulder. Every time I swing, low. Right there. Okay? Backside rotates to the ball. Do the same thing on an inside pitch. Another thing you can do with batting practice. Take a tee. Put it right in front of the kid's back foot. Set the tee up right there. About even with this elbow, a little bit below the elbow right there. Throw batting practice to him. Watch how many of them are going to hit that tee. If I'm down here, I'm never going to touch it. Never going to touch it. Bang, right there. Had a chance this past spring to go down and watch the Washington Nationals uh, take batting practice one Sunday. Uh, watch my kid hit. That Adam Don Zimmerman and all his big leaders all hit. And the first thing they did, they took two rounds, about 10 to 15 swings opposite field. And they just stayed loaded, let the ball travel, and whoo! Drove the ball opposite field, trying to get round balls, like Jim was talking about, trying to get under the ball and make it backspin, make it sail. They did at least two rounds up. Then the thing that really impressed me is they started hitting balls and pulling them. Well, instead of seeing this, like you see high school guys, where you get around the ball and it hooks, they were hitting like this and hitting balls to left field out of the ballpark, and the ball was just taking off and going straight. Why? Because instead of passing the back and getting around it, they were here, and the bat was in front of the ball, so they were hitting it square instead of coming around it. And they hit several balls down the line just inside the foul pole, but instead of hooking foul, they stayed fair. Because they were just right straight to the ball. It was great to watch them low and hit through the ball. The only guy that had a little up in his shoulder was done. Because he's six foot seven, 220 pounds, and hit a ball freaking mile. He can miss hit a ball and hit out a ball. Okay? Not many guys can do that. Okay? You and I aren't dealing with that kind of guy. We're dealing with a kid that's just, he's got, he's trying to get the bat in front of the ball. Okay? Any questions? All right, next thing. Soft toss. Uh, I'm going to have George feed me. I told him not to embarrass me doing this. Us old guys. Okay, we have a little play. Now, every day you need to have a routine. The kids need to understand you're not an entertainer. You're there to help them get better. Yes, you have certain drills. You should have a variety of drills that Tim was talking about. But you need to have specific routines they do every day. So when they come to the ballpark, they're ready to go. Now, let me show you one. It's a great drill. Uh, I use the back of the net. We take a batting cage or a wall, take a piece of tape, and put it on the wall about chest to belly button high in front of it. And we put it at a little bit of an angle, about all 10, 12 degrees right there. Okay? They get near the wall with the back foot. I get loaded here now. I'm going to imagine now, if I cast, what am I going to do? I'm going to hit that wall. So I'm going to load, I'm going to rotate, and I'm going to follow that string or that tape with the barrel of my bat right down through. So i got to be short to it and keep the barrel long through. Okay, you do the same thing on the inside pitch. I can turn this way. Okay, I'm going to rotate. If I get long, I'm going to hit that wall or hit that net. And I'm going to stay right down through it. Boom. And I have my kids, they got to take 15 to 20 cuts inside and outside doing that first. And what that does, if I start doing this, what happens? I can't follow that line. 
I gotta keep my head vertical and I gotta stay. Now, people say, well, you're trying to teach them to hit ground balls. Bullshit. Okay? You saw the pictures, you saw the videotapes. If you want to keep teaching hit the way you taught hitting before, swinging like this, fine, don't lie to me. That's not what we're teaching. We're teaching geometry. Okay, I got a guy throwing 80 miles an hour at me. I'm gonna to try to get to point A to point B as fast as I can. When that bat gets in front of the ball, it doesn't matter if I went this way or this way or this way. The only thing that matters is contact. What do they call it in geometry? Tangent? They're correct, the Germans know all this stuff. The Belgians know it, don't you? Tangent? That's the point I make contact, right there. Okay? The key is which way did the bat come when it makes contact? If my bat's coming this way and I hit that ball from the middle down, where's it going? It's going out of the ballpark. It's going to be deep because it's going to spin backwards and carry. If I get a little bit on top of it, I got a ground ball. So I'm making my, stick, my mistakes above the ball instead of below. Okay? And that little drill like that is pretty good. That's a good warm up drill. And the T drill, right? The next thing we're going to do, we're going to do soft toss. Okay? I'm going to start out with a little bag back here. We're going to start out. Now, George is going to hold the ball out in front. You want to simulate everything just like a game. Okay? So for me to load, I gotta get a loading action from him. So he's gonna drop the ball, I'm gonna load, he's gonna feed, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna let the ball get to me and stop the bat. Load. See how long I waited, I'm gonna try to wait and let the ball get here. Load. Right there. Let it get to me. Load. Right there. Let it get to me. Then I wanna stay above it, behind it, and in front of it. And now, I'm gonna swing. Yeah. Right behind it and right there. Go through it. A little bit more. Load. Down through it. Load. Right down through it. Now, he's speeding a little slow. He thinks I'm 80, I'm only 60. So he can feed a little hard. He can feed a little hard. Load. Right there. Load. Right there. Now, where's my head the whole time? Straight up and down. Where are my shoulders? They're going through the ball. Am I falling over? No, I can swing about 100 times without getting on my head. 50. <laughs> but a good point on the speeder. You've got to teach this. If you have the players pairing up, you can't feed every player. They need the pairs. And do you want to try to hit a ball that's doing this, or do you want to hit a ball that's doing this? They're going to have an easier time if you put a little something on it and it's on the line. Because that little pull oh, I'm trying to be soft with is, makes it a lot harder. Good. Pardon me? I like, I like it down there. I mean, you can do that as long as the key is you feed it firm. Because we're playing baseball, not slow pick softball. That's the key. Jim, that's a good point. You gotta teach this guy. Remember the other day I was talking about getting your parents and teaching them? You're gonna have a parent do this, okay? So again though, I'm starting out low position, and you can start in your extended stride position. Low and stop the back. Low, rotate, right there, okay? Then swing. Low. So long I waited, I let that ball come to me. What are you gonna have to do on fastballs away from you? Let them get deep. Breaking balls, change up, let them get deep. Okay, now, turn it inside. This is the toughest one for me, because I'm getting, I'm gonna get right there. Okay, stop the bat again. I'm gonna load, feed, right there. Try to get turned, right there. Okay, now, where's he feeding me? He's feeding front hip, that's where the ball's gonna be inside part of, inside half of the plate. When I'm feeding it, when he's feeding outside, I want to feed my belly button, not my back hip, my belly button. Now I'm driving the ball to right field. This is inside, right here, okay? Then I'm going to take my swing. Load. Right there, it's late. Load. Right there. Load. Right there. Notice, I'm not sitting back. That makes my swing really long. I'm trying to get up. On top, rotate it, and in front of the ball as fast as I can, okay? All right, that's the that's next sequence, okay? Let me show you something else about the team, the visual part, too. Yeah, just one more. 
Okay, on a ball, we call this the front part of the ball right there. I call that smiley face. <laughs> I want my kids working on their vision as much as possible. So, if I got a ball on a tee, right there, I'm turning smiley face towards it. So, if I'm going to hit the ball with Mario, I want to stay inside that ball. I want to try to hit that smiley face right there. Okay? Let's say I'm working on an inside pitch. Okay? Okay, if I'm going to work inside, i got to turn up a little bit. Why do I have to turn up a little bit? So I can stay quick and on top of the ball, okay? I want it down like this. You know, I want to move along. So everything you can use in practice to help your kids use the vision, the body, everything you can help, help them with use it. So we use smiley face. Another thing is soft toss. When George is feeding me soft toss, you can take the ball and cover it up behind you as you pull it back. And then when you feed it, feed it four seam, two seam. In other words, ready? Here we go. All right, watch. We'll go back here. I'm going to say low. What was it? No. Okay, right here. You don't know. Four. Two sink. And it takes a while. But what are you working? You're working their vision also, okay? So you can do that on soft toss. You can do it front feet, okay? Now, George is going to get around on this side. Now, what I'm doing now, Jim was talking yesterday about timing, okay? Tease, not much timing. Soft toss, a little more timing, okay? Front feet, a lot of timing, okay? Now, I can take the T and put it back here and stay on top of it. So what I'm going to do, let's say I'm in a batting cage. I've got that short screen maybe 10 feet in front of me, and he's going to be behind it to the side. But we're going to adjust here. He's feeding me over the outside corner. I'm going to let it travel, and I'm going to use that stop the bat drill. Okay? Low. Right there. It's a Low, right there. Low, right there. Now, what am I doing? I'm staying loaded until the ball gets there and then I'm rotating to it. You watch your kids. They're right here. Especially because he's off at an angle, right? So the next thing is he's feeding me and I'm driving down through the ball. Low, right there. Low, right there. Low, right there. Notice I'm tracking the ball, and I'm rotating first, staying on top of the ball, okay? Turn it this way. Now what are we doing? Inside, same thing. He's going to feed right here. I'm going to load, right there, get on top. Load, right on top. It's a lot harder from this position than the others. Load. Right on top, okay? Again, I'm going to keep go through it and drive through the baseball, okay? Wiffle balls work great for this. Okay, now, let's say the next stage, the kid does a pretty good job of this. Alright? We're going to back up. Alright? I would get back here about this far, right here. George would be behind the screen. Okay, from that angle, he's throwing under him. Now we get behind the screen, and he's going to throw overhand to me. All right, as he's throwing overhand to me, uh, I'm going to read the ball. So he's throwing two seams and four seams to me. First thing, where are we going to start out hitting first? Away. Always start away. Let the ball travel. I'm going to drive the ball the other way. Can you use that stop the bat throw on this? Yes, you can. Especially if you've got a kid that's reaching for everything. So, look, I want you to do the stop the bat. What's it making you? Wait. It makes him wait and do this right there, okay? Now, here's the thing I've seen in clinics. You put on all this stuff and show guys these drills. I've been coaching a long time. Jim Lefebvre, there's a guy in the big leagues and everything. And then you go watch some guys practice. 
And you remember them sitting in the stands and they, they go out and they do the same damn thing they've been doing for the last 10 years. And yet they were the guys sitting in the stands doing this. Not paying attention. Okay? So use this stuff. Make use of it. You gotta learn how to do the drills just like I had to learn how to do it. You may find something else that works better for you. Use it. Okay? Now, from this short screen right here, he's throwing two seams, four seams. I'm picking them up. Pretty soon you got your kids. Four seam. Two seam. Now they're starting to see the ball. Well, if they can see the ball coming out of his hand, pretty soon they're going to start noticing things. Then all of a sudden I take the ball and I turn it. And I cut it. And I throw him a cutter. And he goes, oh, what's that? What did it have on? Well, I had a dot. <coughs> Good. He's starting to notice stuff. Okay? Then he turns it in and he throws a swerve or a curve. And all of a sudden he notices that the ball's coming up out of the guy's hand. The hand's turned in for him. Now you're really getting somewhere. Because they're learning to, to differentiate between different pitches coming out of that guy's hand. And they're learning timing for it. Okay? So we start off outside. Then we work inside. Then we back up. Short screen. We start off outside. Inside, then we go to breaking balls. And he throws that slider. I gotta stay on it and drive it. If I hang it up in here and he swings at it and pops it up, I'm gonna ask him, how come he swung at that ball? Well, it wasn't in your zone. We weren't looking for that pitch. So you start making them differentiate about what pitch they're looking for, and then make sure they wait for it, and then I'm gonna attack that pitch. Okay? Any questions? No question. Okay. Either clear as mud or you understand most of it. Okay, look again, there's you know there's different ways to teach stuff. And the thing you gotta understand is to, in this day and age you have some tremendous technology. I know during the World Series they slowed swings down. You got to see guys stay on breaking balls. Drive me away, ugly. There's another guy. If you got a left-handed hitting kid, what a great swing to try to emulate. Just right in here, boom, great cut to the ball. Not a very big dot, knocks the crap out. Okay, so use that technology. You got some of these programs, look at them, pick them up, make some adjustments in the way you're teaching the game to your kids. Thank you very much.